Welcome to another episode of Sage Studio. I'm Tiffany Webster, and today I'm really fortunate to be joined by two very special guests of ours. We have the current superintendent of the Hellendale School District with us, Ross Swearingen. Thank you, Ross, for being here. And also with him, we have the incoming superintendent, Josh Benka. So welcome, Josh. Thank you so much for both being on our podcast today. You're very welcome. Well, we wanted to take a minute to highlight you and the work that you've done throughout the years, because we are so fortunate to have had Hellendale School District be our authorizer for our Sage Oak Charter School for many years. And we are so appreciative of the relationship and the leadership that you have provided that in this exciting time of your retirement, Ross, we just wanted to take a moment to appreciate all that you've done for Sage Oak Charter Schools and charter schools in general. And then also talk a little bit about the transition over to Josh's leadership. So let's first start by talking about the authorizer role. As an authorizer, if I'm understanding this right, you kind of bring that charter school under your wing of one of the offerings for your district. Is that right? That's very correct. The charter school serves as this opportunity for students who are looking for something that's a little bit more personalized, looking for something that's a little bit more independent. How do you think our charter school has been able to serve those types of needs to the students? Well, I, me personally, I think that, that there's that all different kids have all different types of learning. And so isn't so the, the brick and mortar setting isn't the best for every single student. So literally, if we can provide more opportunities and more ways for kids to learn, then it, it becomes better for them. Does everyone in your district have that sentiment towards charter schools or was it a little bit of a tough sell to bring a charter school under the Hellendale district umbrella? It wasn't really a tough sell at all. I believe that everybody in our school district has that sentiment of literally, okay, if it's good for one, then it can be good for many. And that's what would have kind of looked at for the way of educating all kids in our district. So Josh, I'm going to turn the table over to you on this one, because I know that when you came into Hellendale District, that this idea of a charter school being part of the district wasn't maybe necessarily something that you were on board with right away. Tell me a little bit about your experience kind of coming into the district. What were your initial feelings about charter schools? Thanks, Tiffany. Initially, coming into a school district that had charter schools, I hadn't worked at one before, and I had heard things in the media and things like that at different workshops and what have you about charters. And a lot of those at the time were in a negative light. And it was really thinking uh, from the mentality that these charters are taking students from school districts and they are in it for just the money and all of that. And being here and working with Sage Joke really kind of changed my mind on that. Working with Ross over the last several years, he said, we've got great charter schools. Sage Oak really provides an environment for uh, people that learn a little differently than maybe others. It's really changed my mindset on charters and how I saw them because I've seen charters such as Sage Oak do great things for students. We're all seeing how our students need different things. Do you feel like you are seeing um, more and more students lean into the independent study model? I think that. The pandemic has really shook things in the sense that the independent study became the norm for a little while there. But over my time here, the independent study model has grown in the number of students uh, participating in their education in that way. And my expectations are that it'll continue because there's a lot more people that are working remotely. They want their their kids to be at home with them. They want to be able to educate their kids and work with their kids individually. And they have more flexibility when they're able to work at home to do some of those things. And I still think there's always going to be a spot for traditional brick and mortar schools as well. It's just, I think that the public education landscape now it really needs to continue to work for what's best for students. And that, and that is going to be, I think, some of these different models working out and having some more choice. We've talked a little bit about the benefits to students, and then I know, Russ, you and I had a little conversation, too, um, before we started recording about the benefits to the leaders within your district and the leaders within the charter schools. 
are coming together in new ways. Talk to us a little bit about that. Well, one of the things that we do is we meet once a month with our, the leaders of Say Joke in uh, Excel. And we sit and talk and share ideas and thoughts about uh, education. And so, so having the, the dialogue that we didn't used to have is, is, has become very important and part of the thing that we really look forward to. I know, Ross, that some of the things that have made you such a fantastic superintendent and such a great leader have been your um, exchange of ideas with other leaders and leading from a place of inquiry and asking questions and how can you support the people within your district best. Tell me a little bit about some of the the values that you have as a leader and why you think they've worked for leading Hellendale for so many years. Well, I think it comes around to service. It's like you're, you're trying to provide things to, to be able to make things better for people who are on the front lines. So making sure that we're providing the things that are needed for for staff and for students as well so that they can flourish. That's, that's been my main goal. And Josh, I am excited about some of the leadership strategies that you're going to be bringing to the table because your background is a little bit different. You actually started off on more of the business side of things, and now you're bringing that to the leadership table. So tell us a little bit about your background and what you're bringing in as the successor here. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm coming in as the chief business officer or am the chief business officer for the next couple of weeks uh, for Hellendale School District. And in that role, I monitor all kinds of different things from the resource standpoint, technology, food service, transportation, and all of the fiscal services. And so part of working with Sage Oak as the authorizers, I look at their budget and uh, check out their financials and make sure that they look sound and that they are, are running into any trouble. And I try to offer, if I can, any helpful advice or strategies or anything from that regard. I know that compliance is another big part of what I've had to take on under my current umbrella. And so moving into that superintendent role, it's like, okay, how do we talk about those compliance pieces and collaborate on those? Because it's really about how do we strengthen each other? We often talk about our Sage Oak core values and compliance is one of them. And I know that it's really important to our school to be in compliance, to be upstanding, to make sure that we are maintaining our uh, WASC accreditation. We also want to make sure that we are remaining uh, fiscally sound going forward, just again, to provide that level of security to our Sage Oak community so that we can continue to serve our students and our families and employ our staff members for many years to come. So I think having your expertise in that area and your extra eyes and ears to just oversee that um, will continue to be very valuable um, to us and to the other charter schools in the area. Tell me a little bit too about not only are you bringing a business background, but you're also bringing a global systems background. So tell me a little bit about the work that you've done with global systems and how you will apply that to your leadership as well. Sure. Yeah. My master's in international business. They talk about uh, other countries and what other countries are doing around the world when it comes to education and how education in the United States has gone from being number one uh, or, or top education in all industrialized nations to being the the lowest in industrialized nations. Uh, and so it's really looking at some of those things and where some of these countries that are that are really high scoring in education, what are they doing? What are the differences? And trying to bring those pieces into the schools here in the United States. I think it's really exciting to see how you are building upon the foundation that Ross has started with the um, relationships with the charter schools and establishing Hallandale as a great partner. We couldn't do what we do without the authorization of your school district. We have to be authorized by a school district in order to serve the students that live in those counties. So we are so grateful to you that you value the partnership with Sage Oak, the leadership that you bring to Sage Oak so that we can continue to serve um, students within those counties and within your school district. So I think this partnership is really special to us. I think the um, relationship between the two of you is so unique that um, the outgoing superintendent has a relationship with the incoming superintendent so that you can make a really nice, smooth transition. Ross, when is the big day? When do you officially put the gone fishing sign on the door? 
Well, the gone fishing sign is going to go up on July 1st. So okay. The, so, yeah, so somewhere between now and then. Nice. And then, Ross, do you get a little bit of a break or, or do you hit the ground running? Yeah, I get no breaks. So it'll be <laughs> right into it. But yeah, I really want to thank Ross for all of his mentorship over the last several years and just all of the things that he's helped with making sure that I'm able to accomplish things in my current job. And he's just continues to be a mentor and his, his gone fishing sign might be up, but his cell phone's still going to be on. <laughs> so he's definitely said, well, if you need some support on anything, I'm going to fall away, which is just fantastic. And I really appreciate him for that. So. I love it for sure. What are you looking forward to most, Josh? I think what I'm looking forward to most is really working with our principals and our teachers on bringing our students into the future, looking at all of these new evolving technologies with things like AI and mm -hmm. how do we incorporate some of those tools into the classroom because that's really what they are as their tools. They're going to change the workforce and change the landscape of what we do in society. And I heard the other day something about it being one of the fastest growing technology uh, of all time. And uh, so it'll be really interesting to see that evolve over the next several years. And I want to uh, really work with our teachers and our administrators to be ready for how do we work with these tools with students and work with them with efficacy. So it's really about still student learning and student focus and building those tools for the future. Ross, what's on your agenda? What are you looking forward to? I'm looking forward to not having to get up and be somewhere. <laughs> yes. That's about, that's about all I'm looking forward to is, is watching the view and just, I mean, that's my way of saying, I don't have to be anywhere. So yeah. We just grab a cup of coffee or whatever and just sit on the couch and veg out for a bit. Ah, well-deserved, well-deserved for sure. Any final words, Ross? I'll leave up to you. No, I think it's just, I, I'm very pleased to, to see that Hallandale is going to be heading in the right direction and with John under Josh's leadership. And I think that he will continue to work with our charter schools to be able to uh, ensure their success as well. Well, we're looking forward to it. Thank you so much for both being on the podcast today. Really great to talk to you both. Congratulations, Ross, on a wonderful career and your retirement. And Josh? We are excited to see what the next few years bring. Welcome aboard. Thanks so much, Tiffany. You have a great afternoon. Thanks. You too.